Did you know that Redshift for Cinema 4D has several methods for visualizing translucent materials? Subsurface scattering, or SSS, refers to the scattering of light beneath the surface of an object. This can occur in various forms in nature and in computer graphics as well. Colored glass, translucent bodies, thin-walled objects, or semi-transparent materials, or liquids. Subsurface scattering in a simple or multiple form is the keyword for all of these phenomena. The key element in Redshift is the standard material node with its transmission and subsurface sections. Transmission contains all parameters for transparency, refraction and simple subsurface scattering. Subsurface contains all parameters for more complex so-called multiple subsurface scattering. Transmission and subsurface can therefore be used to display all types of light penetration. Depending on the material, the two areas can be used individually or together. Using this still life, let's take a closer look at the four use cases mentioned before. The first use case involves colored glass. The glass material of this drinking glass is determined by minimally scattered reflection, the IOR defined under reflection and a very slight greenish tint. In reality, this tint is typical of soda lime glass, the everyday drinking glass you will find in your kitchen at home. It comes from iron oxides and only becomes visible when light penetrates deeper into the glass, as in the glass base in this case. In Redshift, we simulate this behavior in the standard material node in the transmission area with the parameters scatter color and depth. Scatter color determines the color of the effect, darker colors tend to produce more subtle colorations, while lighter colors tend to produce milky or even opaque results. Depth defines the penetration depth in centimeters at which the coloring takes full effect. Values close to zero produce an almost opaque material. The glass would almost become porcelain here. The names scatter color and depth indicate what's actually happening here. Subsurface scattering. But the variant we have just looked at is a simplified form known as single subsurface scattering. Here, light only hits a single color particle and is then reflected back to the camera. This is ideal for materials with a less pronounced scatter effect such as lightly colored glass or with a low depth value, porcelain or hard plastic. In the second use case, the tomato, however, we are not dealing with transmission but only with distinct subsurface scattering. Light penetrates deep below the surface of the tomato, is scattered by several color particles and only then reflected back to the camera. This is known as multiple subsurface scattering. The result is a strong scattering of light in the volume of the body with variations in hue and saturation. Let's take a look at the subsurface settings in the standard material node. Weight determines the strength of the subsurface scattering. Scale determines the maximum penetration depth of the light. Color determines the basic color of the effect. Here you can work with a color or connect a shader or an image texture. In our case, we use the image texture and you will find something interesting here, because a look into the node editor reveals that the color texture is only connected to the subsurface color and not, as usual, to base color, meaning the diffuse reflection. Base color is also completely scaled down. Why? The reason for this is that subsurface scattering itself also contains a component for diffuse reflection. If subsurface scattering is used heavily in a material, an additional definition of diffuse reflection under base color is therefore superfluous. For the radius parameter, let's head over to this piece of broccoli. The visual result of radius is the coloration of subsurface scattering, especially in small areas, such as the flower buds of the broccoli. But to look at radius more clearly, let's examine a variation of the scene with only subsurface scattering on and lit by an infinite light with parallel light emission. Here you can clearly see what radius actually does. Radius controls which color is allowed to penetrate the object at full scale depth and which colors are left over and immediately return to the surface. In our case, a light green is allowed to penetrate with full scale depth that means 0.1 cm into the object, 
The leftover colors result in a slightly violet-like and therefore complementary color tone, which immediately returns to the surface and is mixed there with the subsurface color. A more differentiated result can be achieved by simply connecting a more saturated version of the color texture to radius instead of just using a color. If we then connect the normally saturated color texture to subsurface color again, the subtle and highly realistic variation that radius generates becomes apparent. Finally, there's the anisotropy parameter. This determines whether the scattering of the light should be uniform or more directional. The default value 0 corresponds to a uniform, that means isotropic, scattering. Positive value, on the other hand, increasingly directs the scattering away from the light source, while negative values tend to scatter the light back to the light source. The parameters described only show their full strength in subsurface scattering mode random walk, which is why it's the mode of choice for this video. The third use case concerns translucency effect of thin-walled objects such as the apple leaf here. The effect is best seen in pure backlighting, so I will deactivate all lights except for the rim lights. The parameters for such translucency are also based on subsurface scattering, but are much simpler. In the standard material node, the geometry area is decisive for this. If the checkbox thin wall is activated, all parameters in the subsurface area except for color and weight are grayed out. The former multiple subsurface scattering thus becomes single subsurface scattering, and also the refractive index of the material is now ignored. The object is thus interpreted as infinitely thin, ideal for the translucency of objects such as leaves or paper. By the way, in the Redshift documentation, the effect is referred to as translucency, but in common language, however, the term translucency is a collective term that also includes the phenomena that are represented with multiple subsurface scattering. So, better let's follow common language here. The fourth use case concerns partially transparent liquids. In our case, orange juice. Let's first try to create its appearance using only single subsurface scattering in the transmission area. With full transmission weight, an orange scatter color, and a penetration depth of 1.2 cm, we have already achieved a fairly good representation of orange juice. The straw can still be seen in the juice up to a certain depth, but the scatter color increasingly covers it at greater depths. If we increase depth, the juice becomes a rather thin soda. If we reduce depth to just above zero, the juice becomes a wax-like pulp. So, that already seems to work. However, if we take a closer look at the juice, we notice that the hue and saturation in the volume of the juice remain almost the same, and only the brightness is varied. There seems to be no light interaction between the color particles. As a result, the subsurface scattering effect appears less volumetric and somewhat flat. And it is. Because what takes place here in the transmission era is the single subsurface scattering already familiar from the colored glass. Light hits only one particle and is then reflected to the camera, without taking the color and saturation of other particles with it. The juice does not really look tasty this way. We therefore need multiple subsurface scattering. But if we set the subsurface weight to 1, nothing changes, as multiple subsurface scattering can only work with fully or partially opaque materials. We therefore reduce the transmission weight to a good 50%. This gives the material back 50% opacity and thus 50% of the medium in which multiple subsurface scattering can be trapped. Now we have a wonderful variation of colors and saturation in the volume of the juice given by subsurface color and radius color. At the same time, we preserve a certain depth-dependent transparency given by scatter color and depth. The straw is still visible in the juice near the glass and disappears inwards in multiple subsurface scattering. This use case is therefore a hybrid of single subsurface scattering in the transmission area and multiple subsurface scattering in the subsurface area. With the techniques described, ranging from single and multiple subsurface scattering to the thin wall option, 
all phenomena of light penetration can be created as shown in the four use cases. And you immediately feel like having a refreshing sip of juice or maybe bite into a crunchy apple. If you like this video, press the subscribe button and don't miss the next episode of Did You Know Redshift for Cinema 4D exclusively on this channel.